friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams again. Today I'm going to be doing a shelf spotlight. This is a series that I started a while ago, but I haven't done it in a month or two. And I'm really excited to bring it back today because today I'm going to be highlighting books on my shelves written by black authors. And in light of the Black Lives Matter and everything that's been going on, I 100% want to support these black authors. I know that I need to do even better in diversifying my bookshelves, but I have uh, 11 books here to talk about today, five that I've already read and loved, and six that I haven't read yet that are on my shelves by black authors. I know there are so many lists on Instagram and other places of books that you can be reading, but I just wanted to share with you who watch my channel books that I love and am excited to read that are by black authors and hope that you pick these books up if you haven't yet. At least the first five I can very highly recommend. I'm going to start with the five that I have read and all of these, I think I gave all five of these five stars. Last year my favorite book of the whole year was Just Mercy by Bryan Stevenson. This is a nonfiction about the gross injustices in the judicial system and the mass incarceration of in particular poor people and blacks especially and Brian Stevenson is a lawyer a defense lawyer who has started the Equal Justice Initiative where they particularly work with men and women on death row to reduce their sentences or to get them overturned because they're innocent. He shares a lot of the cases that he works with in here, in particular Walter McMillan, who was his first case when he first started the EJI. I think that this book was incredibly well done. It was very eye-opening and enlightening for me that this happened. All of these stories, all of these people are being wrongfully convicted in my lifetime. And in, it's not surprising anymore in light of everything that is happening around us and, and you, you have to be under a rock to not understand that there are some injustices happening in, the, in, in the, what should be the justice system. So I think that this is so well done. It's done with grace and with truth and I would highly recommend reading this book. Then this year in January, I read The Sun Does Shine and this is um, a memoir of Anthony Ray Hinton, who is one of the people that uh, Brian Stevenson worked with. He was on death row for a crime that he did not commit and he was there for 30 years. Unbelievable. This man, Anthony Ray Hinton, with the help of Laura Love Harden, wrote this memoir of his experience and his joke of a trial and conviction um, and his thought process and journey of being on death row for 30 years. His story was so challenging and insightful, infuriating a lot of times, um, and just so well done. I, um, I said when I first read this in January that it was gonna be among my top of the year, and here we are six months later, and I still say that this is my favorite book so far of 2020. So, so, so good. This one even is a little bit, um, as far as readability, I I think that this one is a little bit more readable than, than Just Mercy. However, both of these are spectacular and I definitely recommend reading them and I would highly recommend looking into EJI as a place to be giving some of your finances if that's something that you want to do during these times. These books are spectacular. Moving on to some fiction books that I've read, probably the one I read the longest time ago um, is Homecoming by Yad Jassi. I probably read this two or three years ago when it, um, closer to when it first came out. Uh, this is a spectacular book as well. In this we follow two half-sisters who didn't really know each other but in Ghana and uh, we follow their, their family through generations. So we kind of flip-flop back and forth between these two, starting out with the two sisters and their stories. One of them remains in Ghana and marries a slave trader and the other one is sold into slavery and comes across on a boat to America. And then we follow each generation of those two branches of the family tree. Each chapter is almost like its own short story. Yaj Yasi just does a spectacular job of kind of chronicling the history of, of blacks in America uh, through this family line and also black people in Ghana and what happened with the, that family line in Africa. I love that 
that although each chapter feels like a short story, she really did a great job of helping you understand the characters. I wanted more at the end of each chapter. I wanted to keep going with each person's story. I was very glad that there's a family tree at the beginning of my copy of this book so that I could keep, I kind of put a post-it when I was reading it so I could keep flipping to that to get an understanding of where we were in history in each of these two families. But this one was just so well done and I'm really excited. I believe she has a new one coming out or out already. I have to look into that. Um, but. I would definitely be interested in reading more from Ya yeah, Jassy. And then just last year, I read Kindred by Octavia Butler. I had read Parable of the Sower a little bit before. Uh, Octavia Butler is one of the first black women to write science fiction. This story, Kindred, is a little bit of a mix of science fiction and historical fiction, which is my favorite. In Kindred, we follow this, this black woman in the 1970s. She's married to a white man, and she is snatched back into time one day, uh, back to Antebellum South where she is on a plantation and she ends up saving the life of the plantation owner's son. After a while she goes back to 1970s and then this continues to happen, this time jumping thing. Uh, she figures out why it happens throughout the story, um, but you're getting an interesting look at her life as an independent, strong black woman in the 1970s. And then having that mindset in the antebellum South and how that how that plays out. She has to come to grips with slavery and how her ancestors were treated and who her ancestors were, her relationship because she keeps saving his life of this plantation owner's son and the ability that she has to speak into his life because he has a level of respect for her that he might not have normally had with black women of the time. This was just such a uh, thought-provoking and uh, well-told story. I absolutely loved it. I, I had a harder time when I read Parable of the Sower. That was the first Octavia Butler that I read. I did not carry on with that um, trilogy, but I do know that I have a kind of an unpopular opinion about that one, but I definitely loved Kindred and would recommend it. It does get a little graphic at times and brutal. I think it starts out the first sentence like, I lost an arm on my last trip home, my left arm. <laughs> so on her last trip home, like she loses an arm. So it gets, it, it does get a little brutal at times as you can expect when you're talking about slavery, but this is spectacular and I would definitely recommend that one. And then just last year, I towards the end of last year, I read Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. I had the privilege of hearing her speak. Her, my library brought her in and she was just a phenomenal woman. This book has a little bit of, I don't know what you call it, ghosts? <laughs> what, is that magical realism? Is that surrealism? Is that supernatural? I'm not sure, uh, but there is a ghost character in here. In this book, we follow this, this family and we also, in, in a Gulf Coast, Mississippi town, and also the Mississippi State Penitentiary, which was ultimately a way to re-enslave black people. They would put them in this penitentiary, in this jail, but then make them do the work of slaves. But then also the language in which she writes her books are just spectacular. I feel like the story of this, I would have just given a four stars, but because of the way she writes and the language, it's so poetic and beautiful. I upped it to five stars and I definitely am interested in reading more from Jasmine Ward. I I love her. I love her. So this was a little bit, a little different from my normal reads in the ghost aspect of things. I don't typically read books with that supernatural element, but I, um, I loved this one. So very, very good. And then I have a handful of books here that I haven't yet read and I kind of kick myself because some of these have been on my shelves for a long time, a long time. Like Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I should have read this ages ago. This has been on my bookshelf for over three years and I can't believe that I haven't read it. Um, but in this one, I believe we have a Nigerian immigrant who comes to America um, and then she has this relationship with a, a man that she left behind in Nigeria and I believe their, their lives kind of intersect again. Um, but it's kind of like following that American dream does it always work? Does it not? And what's that like for a life of an, a Nigerian woman? I've heard so, so much praise for this book and I can't believe that I haven't picked it up yet. Same as 
<laughs> the Underground Railroad. This has also been on my shelves by Colson Whitehead. This has also been on my shelves for so, so long. And now I also want to read The Nickel Boys by him. I can't believe I haven't read these. The Underground Railroad is kind of a slave narrative where the Underground Railroad is also a legitimate, a, a literal railroad that runs underground that helps slaves to escape to the north. I've heard, again, so much praise for this one and it definitely has been on TBRs over the last couple years. I just haven't gotten to it. Shame. Shame on me because I definitely am interested in this one. Definitely. Huh. Um, another one that I've had for quite a while is The Mothers by Britt Bennett. And I do have The Vanishing Half coming in my Book of the Month box for this month, um, which is Britt Bennett's newer book. I believe this one is told in the structure of a Greek chorus where the mother, this group of women, are the narrator. So it's a like collective we kind of narration, which I don't always get on well with, but I, I think this is a story of a young, a young black girl who gets pregnant before being married and is involved in her church community and all the mothers and what they have to say about this. Um, I could, be, I could be wrong about the storyline of that, but uh, I'm very interested to read this one. I have heard so much praise for it. I'm just a little bit wary because of that whole, I think it's called a Greek chorus where it's like a collective narrator. So we'll see, but I definitely plan on giving this one a try. I have read another book by Tayari Jones, An American Marriage, and while I didn't like the characters in it and the choices that they made, I loved her writing and I loved the book. Um, so I'm very interested in reading Silver Sparrow, and I believe this is about a man who kind of has a dual life. <laughs> so he has two families that don't know about each other until he dies. Oh, maybe he doesn't die. The opening sentence of this one is, my father, James Witherspoon, is a bigamist. He was already married 10 years when he first clamped eyes on my mother. Interested in reading this one? I love Tayari Jones' writing, and I think this cover is gorgeous. So I'm, I'm really interested in this one. And two more that I've just recently purchased. I grabbed uh, The Girl with a Louding Voice by Abby Dare uh, from Book of the Month a couple months ago. This is a, about a young Nigerian girl who just wants to get an education, um, but she is kind of forced into this arranged marriage to an older man and about her learning to use her voice and to speak up. I'm really excited about this one. I've heard wonderful things. I've heard that the audiobook especially is very good. The narrator, I forget, a, a dunny, a dunny, is a 14 year old girl and English is not her first language and so it's written in her broken English in a sense um, and I think that listening to that on audiobook might be a little bit easier to follow along for me than reading it but I'm still so interested in this story and I've heard such praise for it that I definitely want to pick it up soon. And then one last one that I'm going to talk about today I just picked up from Book Outlet. Guys, I know many people are taking uh, a back seat or totally stopping their Book Outlet and Book of the Month subscriptions. And I completely understand, not subscriptions, but Book of the Month subscriptions and ordering from Book Outlet. And I completely understand. I'm not going to talk about the controversy with those at this point. I am stepping back to allow both companies time to make better choices and how they speak to and about people and how they highlight marginalized authors and books and how, how they proceed moving forward. So all of these have been purchased before any of the controversy, but I know that there's a lot out there and I didn't want to talk about Book of the Month and Book Outlet without just kind of saying that I'm aware of the controversy and I'm not one who typically boycotts. I am stepping back and I'm going to allow them time because I know that I make, I'm going to make mistakes moving forward and I know that I am taking the time to kind of evaluate my own thoughts and words and actions and I appreciate grace when it's given to me and and patience while I make those mistakes and hopefully move forward in a positive way and I'm hoping that those two companies do the same thing so I'm gonna step back but also give them room to grow and apologize and learn hopefully hopefully that happens and if it doesn't I guess I'll make a decision later down the road but anyways I did purchase a couple months ago From Scratch by Tembi Locke. This is a memoir of love, Sicily, and finding home. And I believe that this is about an interracial couple 
Love at First Sight, um, Tembi is the woman. She meets Sorrow, an Italian man in Italy. They have some obstacles in their path, um, but I believe this is about their love story and about food and about their journey. And I am really looking forward to reading this one. I haven't heard too much about this one, but I just thought that the story sounded really good and I enjoy memoirs now and then. I don't read nonfiction as often as I maybe should, but I do enjoy a good memoir and so I think that this one sounds fantastic. So here are 11 books that I think that you should add to your TBR if you haven't read them already. I can highly recommend the five that I've read already and I'm very excited about the rest of them. I would love to chat with you down below. I'm in particular looking for more historical fiction written by black authors. So if you know of any good historical fiction that you read, not particularly historical romance, I know Brie from Brie Hill has talked about Beverly Jenkins historical romance. I'm not in particular looking for straight historical romance, but just historical fiction because that's my favorite genre. So if you know of any black authors who write historical fiction, please, please, please let me know because I know I need to expand my shelves. Let me know if any of these sound like something that you want to read or if you've read them and loved them or any other recommendations that you have for me. I love getting recommendations from you guys. So let's have a conversation in the comments down below. You guys know I love talking with you down there. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be talking to you in another video very soon. Bye.